Okay, we see our sounds there. Yes. Hi, Middle. I'm going to mute everybody now and we will begin. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today. And so we begin the session. Okay, so thank you everybody. And as usual, you know, we have one topic today, but whatever the topic, I have the same things to say each time. And so I will be just putting them in different words, putting them in perspective, and we have the same, the same conversation the whole time. So it's so funny because today the topic is fear and how we feel the fear in all other emotions as well. And so it's really, you know, it's strange because one day when we were looking at all the topics that have been covered, one day Mitali came to me and said, you haven't done anything on fear. I said, yeah, I haven't done anything on fear because I talk of nothing else. I only talk of fear and release the fear. Just don't stay in the fear, choose fearlessness. And at each point in time, simply keep releasing fear. So what is there to talk about fear? And then yet yesterday we were talking to somebody else and, you know, they were going through their own process. They said, I keep releasing my anger, but I'm not able to release the anger fully. And I said, yeah, because you haven't looked at the fear underneath it. And they said, really? Underneath the anger, there is fear? I said, only that. Underneath the anger, there is only fear because there is all of this play that you have expectations and they are not being met. And therefore there's fear, you know, fear of all different kinds. And we will go through that. But when they said this, that, you know, they hadn't, they've been releasing the fear, they've been releasing the anger, releasing the anger, releasing the anger. And they had not recognized that underneath it were so many layers of fear. And that's when I said, okay, if this is so difficult to recognize, then let me show you how underneath so many different emotions, there is nothing but fear. Not just sad emotions and frustrating emotions, but even under joy, even under what gives you happiness, what gives you a lot of joy today, well, there is a lot of fear under that as well. And so today we will talk a little bit more about that topic as to how to be able to see the fear, the layer of fear under every other emotion. And then as you are going through your daily chores, daily stuff, daily work, daily tasks, whatever it is, how to be able to see the fear and at least release that layer of fear. So, you know, so looking at fear, if we just talk about fear, then of course, so many times I've made you kind of make a note of what all your fears are. Fears are related to people. Fear is always related to a future event that you think might happen. A future event that has a possibility of happening, but then it also has a possibility of not happening. But what do you do? You take, you take this, this thought, you know, and you start to build on that thought. What is the thought that this will not happen, that will not happen? The universe will not play in my favor. The universe will not play in my favor. It will not give me what I am looking to receive. It will do something that I don't want. And now from that space, you begin to operate. Now you need protection. Now you need security. Why? Because if whatever you are thinking is the wrong stuff that will happen to you, now against that, you need protection. You need security. So anytime you're looking for protection, looking for security, even in this path, you know, I meet so many people who will always, you know, uh, even if they're healing, or, or they're doing something in the energy process, they will, be, they will be talking about, and you know, may I receive all that I need? May I, may I receive something that is good? May I receive the divine? May I receive, and, and I just only laugh because what according to, you know, when you look at the energy space, what is not divine? Everything is arising from divinity. Who is divinity? your divinity. And so whatever experience you are here for, whether you are here to experience rejection 
or you are here to experience sadness or duality in some other form. It's all arising from your energy, which also holds your divinity. And so now starting to learn how to grow that divinity. The first thing that we grow in divinity is fearlessness. What is there to fear if I am Shiva and you are Shiva too? So coming to that space in a little bit of time as to how we need to constantly be aware what emotions we are carrying. So to begin with the most easiest one, anger. Under the anger, why is it that I say that there is fear? When you get angry about anything, whatever it is that is upsetting you, look at the upsetting part itself. It is that you wished for something. You wanted an outcome and the outcome is not shaping up how you thought would be the right thing to happen. So according to you, the wrong thing is happening. And at this point in time, when something is happening, we ask, okay, what is the worst that will happen? If you haven't thought about it, then immediately your first reaction will be, no, 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 this needs to happen. If this doesn't happen, it will be all wrong. Okay, what's the worst that will happen when it is all wrong? No, this can go wrong. This will be bad. The, you know, my future will be ruined. This will be ruined. That will be ruined. My life, my, my husband's life, my family, everything will be ruined. And you put it all onto specific. This needs to happen. Whatever the event might be, it could be a promotion, it could be a job, it could be somebody's marriage, you know, you want your sons and daughters to be married. If they don't get married, then they will be alone. They will be alone in the whole wide world. There will be nobody to take care of them. They will die a very lonely life. What is all of this? And then here is this actor in front of you who refuses to marry. No, no, I don't want to get married. I want to have my own life. And you constantly sit in this fear as to how bad their life is going to be. So many times we've talked about it. Their life is going to be as per their energy. But what is it that you carry? You think that whatever experiences you went through are going to be the exact same experiences in the whole wide world. And especially for your own children, for your own loved ones, your experiences are going to be repeated by them. Maybe and maybe not. If their energy field holds the exact same kinds of fears and the exact same kinds of rejections, they might go through exactly the same experiences that you went through. But maybe not. Because their energy field, we have no idea what that looks like. And so when you are thinking of anybody else, you would call them your loved ones. But if you are thinking about them and you are thinking only with worry, only with fear, then simply understand that's the only emotion that you are sending towards them. Is that a nice thought? That the only thing that you can send to somebody that you love is fear. Do you not think they have enough of it? Why do you need to send them more? Because you think that by fearing for <laughs> Okay, bye, Gita. <laughs> Gita is saying bye to somebody. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know how it became like that. Sorry, sorry. Will somebody remind me what I was saying? I completely lost the track. Okay, nobody remembers either. Okay, all right. Uh, fear. We were talking about fear. So yeah, we yeah. Talk about the loved fear. ones. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The topic. Kids, is, kids yeah. not marrying and passing fear. Yes. Passing. Okay. So somewhere in that. Um, all right. So again, as we say, if that is the only emotion, and you think that for you know, for a loved one, that's the only emotion that you have. And that's the only emotion that you wish to pass on to them. Then go ahead, sit and be more fearful all the time with respect to them and their lives. What are you doing? You are not just sending them fear. You're also increasing the fear frequency more and more in you. Even, even through your anger. They are not following 
what you are telling them to do and that makes you more and more angry the anger is only the anger exists only because you have outcomes in your head if you don't have outcomes in your head no matter what they do you will be able to understand that you are energy and they are energy too you can't control anybody else's energy you can barely control your own your own energy which right now is sitting in fear you can yes you can make the choice and choose fearlessness you can release this energy of fear into the candle and choose fearlessness but if you keep sitting in why are they not listening to me why are they not understanding that what i say is for their good no whatever you say which you think is for their good that's your judgment good and bad good and bad for this one good and bad for that one that's only your judgment there is no such good and bad at all everything is simply an experience and if in their energy field exists that experience and all the raw material for that experience well they are going to experience it you you are already experiencing everything that is manifesting in us everything that is manifesting around us at any point in time people do so many you know they they call out to me and say okay i want to manifest this and i want to manifest that and i say okay take your eyes away from everything that you want to manifest but firstly look at what all is already manifesting your whole life is a manifestation and where is that manifestation happening from it's happening from your energy field so everything that's already happening right now is a manifestation firstly look at this and say is this something about this manifestation that you can do can you shift any of this manifestation and of course we teach you all the time how to shift these these manifestations that are happening in the moment how simply by looking at the energy and being able to release all that is not serving you what all is not serving you anger it's not serving you why is anger not serving you after all it's only an experience yes but as you hold the anger as you hold the anger the frustration the disappointment more and more you are going to play in these frequencies more and more and anything you know in this place i teach you only masti i teach you abundance anything that makes your life anything that makes you more joyful that's what i think we want to play in that's my understanding that most of us want to play in joy most of us want to play in love in abundance well if so then you've got to move away you've got to move away from everything that is not love that is not abundance and yet i'm the same person who also tells you that if it's already happening in front of you which means it's a part of your energy then the first step is to accept it this is you only this is your energy right now that has created this scenario right around you so firstly accept yourself as is as you are and then from that place arises this choice do you want to stay in the energy that you are or do you wish to move it and it's as easy as that you can move it it's a choice you didn't know earlier but now you know that you can always move into any other frequency if you are sitting in the frequency of sadness you can move into the frequency of joy it's a channel the sadness doesn't belong to you this is where we kind of you know start to own our emotions that oh this is you know i am sad i am angry now you are owning your emotions if you are simply able to remember in that point that sadness it's a frequency anger it's a frequency joy it's a frequency and just how on the radio when you can play so many channels and be on any channel that you wish to be then simply here as well in your own life you can play any channel that you wish for and the easiest way to do well 
move to my channel. And so I keep teaching you, move to my channel, move to my channel. You will find so much joy and so much love. The back end, you're constantly playing those frequencies for yourselves. What will happen in front of you? What will manifest in front of you? More and more of this and more of the thing. But again, you know, we, we keep them, you know, going away from the topic, which is how to fear, no, how to figure out all the emotions and the fears underneath it. But I also keep giving you what to do so that now that you figured out that there is fear underneath something, now what to do? Well, release it. So the other one, let's take something like joy, whatever gives you joy. A lot of people get a lot of joy when they buy a new toy. A new toy, that new toy could be a new car, it could be a new home. When something is new in your life, when you've bought something new, it could be a new relationship. Yeah, yeah, you don't buy relationships, but it's okay. New relationships will give you a lot of joy as well. And so what happens when we are sitting with something new, we receive a lot of joy from it. And right in that minute, as we are receiving the joy, we start to put our tentacles into it deeper and deeper. And as we put the tentacles, what are these tentacles all about? These are attachments to that toy, whatever that toy be, but there are attachments now to the toy. Why? Because the toy is giving you joy. It's an outside something that's giving you joy. And now you feel that if it's ever taken away from you, your heart will break. So even, you know, and, and anybody, I remember my time when in India, I bought my first car and, and I would take it to the office. And when the first scratch happened on that car, oh my God, was so much pain. I really abused the fellow who might have, you know, done that to my car. And today, when I look back, so easy to figure out why was I so upset? It, there was going to be a scratch. It was going to happen at some time, but why was I so upset? Because I had put in attachments with that car. So when we do that to anything, even when we do it to a relationship, and then there is a scratch in that relationship, how much pain does it give us? What happened? It's the same relationship that was giving us so much joy. And now suddenly we are feeling so much pain associated with it. What happened? Well, you got attachments, Underneath the attachment is all these layers of fear of losing, of losing this toy, of losing this relationship, this car, whatever, whatever. And from that fear will arise all of this pain. So the joy, it gave you joy, but then fears underneath. And then those fears will convert everything to hurt, to pain, to sadness. So therefore, you know, the fear is there. But now suddenly because of the fear manifesting, you are now sad. Because of the fear manifesting, you are angry. Because of the fear manifesting, now you are sitting in so much hurt or rejection. So underneath all of it, when you go one layer underneath, one layer underneath, take a look, what is it that you fear losing? When we talk about lack, so many people come to me and say, we are experiencing lack. And many times you don't even realize that it's not real lack. Real lack is what is, is when you don't have what you need in the moment. In the moment, if you don't have a breath, then you are sitting in lack of the breath. But most of the times in that moment, whatever you need is with you. If you need even a meal, just one meal, just something to satiate your hunger, that meal is there with you. But what is not there with you? So when you think about it, what are you terming as lack? It's not truly lack. It's fear of lack. It's fear of something not being with you in the future. It's the fear of having a shortage in the future that we call lack. It's not the shortage in the now would be truly lack. But normally when you think of lack, think of lack, it's always about, oh, if I don't have a partner, I'm going to die a lonely death. Now it's not, and then you say, oh, I have lack in my life because I don't have love. 
It's not like in your life today. Today, as soon as you look around, you will find that you'll get love from somebody. As soon as you, you look within and are able to give yourself love, you will find that somebody will give you love. But when you sit in lack or when you think you are sitting in lack, you're constantly projecting a future that's not favorable. And from that future, when you think today into an unfavorable future, that's when you say, I sit in lack. Actually, not lack, but mostly fear of lack. So this too, even underneath the lack, there is the fear that you will not have enough. Whatever you have today, that's all that you will receive. So whatever you have today, you must save, you must put aside, you can't spend today. Why can't you spend today? If there is a need for five bucks today, you're constantly looking for, no, no, I wish I have 10 so that I can spend the five, but there should be 10 with me. Why? Because fear of shortage. That when I need more tomorrow, it will not be given to me. And this is where you sit from fear of lack. Are you short today? Most likely not. But are you sitting in fear of shortage of tomorrow? Absolutely. Then you are sitting in fear, in fear of lack and not just lack itself. And so even underneath the lack, we see so much of fear. It's so cute because, you know, I see this all the time. When people come to me to do the program, I have an Expect Miracles program and it, it happens every month. And then for that, I charge a fee. I charge a fee of 12,000 rupees. And when people come to me and say they, they can't give the money, I, you know, I simply don't judge because I say, okay, whatever frequency they are sitting in, maybe it's true lack, or maybe it's just fear of lack. And it's not my place to judge. It's simply their frequency and they're sitting in it. Even if they have that money, they don't want to part with it. Why? Because they're sitting in lack. They are thinking that they won't have enough, that they can save this money and then that will be better. And so as they sit in the frequency of lack, I simply only laugh because I understand that when they come into my frequency, they'll come into abundance just like that. And abundance has nothing to do with how much money you have into your bank account. Abundance has everything to do with, do you think you will have enough? When you look at the future, just the way when you look at the future today, you only think, oh, I won't have enough. So I must save whatever I have. And then when you come into abundance, you understand that whatever is needed by you will make way to you. It'll find you because you are sitting in the frequency of abundance. That thought process itself shifts and nothing else has changed outside. Outside, nothing needs to change. If you have five rupees in your pocket, even in abundance, you can continue to have the same five rupees in the pocket. But what happens in abundance? The fear is not there. The fear has been looked at. The fear has been observed. The fear has been released. So in abundance, you're able to release this fear that I will not have enough. And instead, you are able to tune into this faith that I am taken care of. Whatever I need will be given to me whenever it is needed by me. Where the five rupees are needed, then five rupees will come through. No, no, I wish that if five rupees are needed, I should get at least 50. Why should you get 50? The 50 will come when 50 are needed. And sometimes, yes, you will receive more. And sometimes you might have to just, you know, look within to say, really, is this the need, a real need? Or am I simply just, okay, I must have this car. I must have this kind of a house. If I don't have this kind of a house, then, you know, my life is incomplete. If I don't become the CEO of a company, my life is incomplete. When you are doing that, then again, you are fearful of nobody evaluating you, nobody giving any importance to you. That too is a fear. This fear that you will not make a mark on this planet, that you will go away unknown. What is that? That too is simply a fear. Who needs to make a mark? Everyone is already a Shiva. To begin with, you are already all that. 
to begin with you are the source where do you need to make the mark and why do you need to make the mark if you are actually out there wanting to make a mark wanting to make a difference to the universe wanting to be known wanting your name out there then understand that every want of yours is coming from lack and underneath the lack when the lack is there underneath the lack it is this fear that nobody will miss you nobody will know who you are so what is it that we need to do do we really need to go out and make banners of our name and put around everywhere make statues whoever it is that is capable of whoever has that kind of money should you be making statues with your name on it what will the statue do for you let me assure you nothing if you are getting the statue built out there to create more of a name to create more on if more of an impression on the outside that lack is going to continue to stay after the first statue you will only have the need for 10 more and what will happen this need only just grows because you haven't addressed the fear underneath the fear of being a nobody what do you need to do about this you simply need to release the fear the fear needs to be released not that you keep going out and establishing more and more because the answers never come from the manifestations manifestations happen in every frequency people think that only abundance will manifest a large bank account and i say no even lack can manifest a large bank account a large amount of money in the bank account abundance can manifest a house and so can lack but when lack manifests a house for you what will that house create for you more it will create for you more lack that's all why because the universe the universe is constantly working on your energy vibration it's not working on what you are receiving today and what has been taken away from you today those small simple little manifestations are by products of your energy vibration and so constantly when when you come to me i i you know i i with the hammer keep beating you with this one thing keep an eye within keep an eye within no matter what's happening outside you keep the eye within from that place within manifestations will happen as manifestations happen keep the eye within if something manifests that you are loving great be in gratitude keep the eye within if something manifests that you weren't expecting it's it's not something that you are liking even at that point in time keep the eye within take a look this has now become an opportunity an opportunity for you to see what energy of yours has manifested something that you don't like take a look at that energy and be in that place that now you can choose to release that energy now you can choose another energy another energy of joy and peace in the now so everything is an opportunity something is an op- is an opportunity for you to be in joy and the other is an opportunity for you to be looking within looking within to see what has manifested and now let's do some more work within and bring yourself back to the frequency of joy back to the frequency of light heartedness the work is always within so now that we've seen that not just not just anger not just rejection not just lack but even joy has a, a layer or two of fears underneath what do we do we stop doing things that are joyful again and again we talk about the journey is not about your action the journey is constantly about what am i feeling what am i feeling and as you are looking outside at the current manifestations if if you are even sitting in joy make sure that you've taken a look about how many attachments you have put into that piece into that event into that person how many attachments are you clinging because the best you know the best way to bring yourself to sadness to hurt to guilt to everything you know that that is heavy that is heavy energy the easiest way to bring yourself there 
is to cling, to bring in tentacles of attachment and to cling. And so all the answers lie in letting go. And when we say let go, what does it mean? Simply don't create outcomes. We, in the last webinar, we talked about equanimity. And why equanimity even before faith? Because even as you have faith, even as you're working with faith, you can always still be creating outcomes. And as soon as you create outcomes, there will be an underlying fear that automatically comes into the picture. What if this outcome isn't fulfilled? So keep looking at the what if, what if. The journey is between choosing. The journey is filled with choices. It's only about choices. Through everything, look at the fear, and then you can go ahead and choose fearlessness. Fearlessness, the path to the soul. You come here, you know, and experience all of this fear. Well, the answer to this I had received a few years ago, saying that the earth is a place. The earth is the place where we come. We come over here simply to experience fear and guilt. This is that hill station. You know, you go to specific hill stations for specific things. So earth is the place where you come. It has loads and loads of fear and guilt. And so whenever the energy wishes to experience fear, whenever the energy wishes to experience guilt, guess which hill station it will go to? Earth. And so when you've come over here and you're experiencing the fear, it is only through awareness only through awareness of your own emotion that you can look within and then choose something else. Instead of fear, fearlessness. Instead of sadness, joy. It's a frequency for God's sake. Don't own it. Simply change the channel. And that's how simple it is for us if we keep looking at ourselves as energy. The minute we get stuck into the roles, this is my son, this is my daughter, this is my you know, this is somebody who needs to be in my life forever. The minute we do that, now we are sitting with fears. You know, every dealing, no matter whether the person gives you joy in the moment or not, but every dealing, you are growing the fear underneath more and more. And so keep releasing, keep looking into the fear with the so what? So what if I don't get the outcome? that I'm looking for. And as you release the outcome, the fears will automatically release. And then you can flow. Then you can flow. Just, you know, a, a few months ago and, and in all of these deaths, due to COVID, due to, um, well, due to death. So I, you know, somebody was asking, oh, this person has died because of COVID and this person has died because of COVID. And it was so untimely. And I said, no, nothing is untimely. Everything is happening in the perfection of that moment. That person has come to a hill station. They will leave when their experience of the hill station is over. If we think it is untimely, if we think that, you know, we need to run from death, then it's simply fear of death that we haven't looked into. We are eternal. We haven't looked at that. We haven't looked at ourselves as energy. Then death is going to make us fearful. So even death, look into it. Look into the fear of death itself and release. What if death comes? So like, no, what if death comes? If death comes, life is incomplete. I need this person to do this for me and to do that for me. Well, those are expectations. They might be met or they might not be met. This, this, these, these roles that we play for each other, we don't form the roles through the body. The body gets to experience the roles. Who is creating the role? Your energy. And so in your energy, whatever roles you have given to other people, whatever roles you have chosen for yourself, those are simply manifesting. Through the manifest now, now that you understand that you have a choice between fear and fearlessness, now choose fearlessness. Why should you choose fearlessness? Because that's the only way that you can start to expand your, you know, your own identity, who you are. You are Shiva and you can only expand when you can see the oneness in everything. Otherwise, till the time you see the separation, 
till that time that you come from the frequencies of the mind, you will keep experiencing more fear, more anxiety, more worry. The minute you become expanded, the minute you are able to come into the energies of oneness, you will experience more joy, more now, more peace. More now, just simply sitting in the now, blank, blissful, without any thought of what the future holds. What the future holds will manifest. When it manifests, we'll take a look at it. In that moment, there will be opportunity. Whatever the opportunity is, we will take a look at it. Why should we fear what is going to manifest? Whatever is going to manifest is going to show us one way or the other, the path forward. So releasing the fear of the unknown as well. It's a very large fear. The fear of the unknown and comes from this place that we, we know that the future won't play in our favor. And I say instead of constantly making that judgment and living in that fear, and when that fear will manifest, you will indeed say, oh yeah, I already knew this is how it was going to happen. I knew it was not going to play in my favor. Well, that's okay that you knew. Do you know that you created it? By sitting in this thought more and more, you created it. And now from the fear, you have so much disappointment. From this fear, now disappointment, it, you know, the, the energy of disappointment is being created. But even underneath that was the fear, fear of the unknown. So, so many parts, you know, every time we look into any emotion. Today, just simply look at all your emotions and see what gave you joy. What made you angry? What got you upset? Sometimes you will think that it's the same actor that's got all of those actions going. The same person has given you joy and then the same person has frustrated you and then the same person has made you sad. The same person has made you angry. What's it all about? Well, of course, it's not about the actor. It's all about the frequencies that you are holding and that person, with that person, there is an equation but underneath that equation, there is fear as well. There is attachment, then there is fear. So take a look at all of these fears that you hold for every actor in your life and use this opportunity today itself to release the fears. Do we, do we work in this way that all the fears are released today and will never come back? Are Baba, no. It's a frequency. You change the channel, the channel might play again. When it plays again, what do you do? You change the channel. And that's all the way, the way, the way forward is. You know, so many people in the morning session, somebody was like, I've released the fear, it's come back again. Oh, well, simple answer. It's come back again, release again. That's the only answer that I provide. I don't even need to go into more deeper answers, into more deeper processes, do that, do this, because I understand that the minute you've caught this question, what am I feeling? And the minute you're able to action that. When somebody says it comes again, I understand that the second time didn't action it. They're just sitting in it and saying, okay, now, now what should we do? We were panel on radio. And by mistake, it moved to another channel altogether. Now, what do we do? Well, change it back to the channel that you were listening to. If you liked that other channel more, you change to that channel. Well, we changed it, but it's shifted back. What do I do? Change back again is the only simple answer. This choice, it's a choice. This choice is in your hands. But for you to be able to exercise this choice, awareness is needed. Awareness simply of this, what emotion am I sitting in? And from every emotion now, you have the next layer. So if you're feeling angry, yes, you release the anger into the candle. Go one layer deeper. Find the fear in there. Why are you angry? What is the outcome that you wanted that you didn't get? Release that attachment to the outcome. From that outcome, there will be fear underneath. Release that fear as well. Any questions for me? Let's take a look at if there is any comments. Okay, no comments so far. Anybody wants to ask any questions, share anything, or simply we go into 
into the meditation. Any questions for me at this point? Not cool. Okay. All right. Just simply a deep breath in. And release. A deep breath in and release. Completely silencing the mind. And at this point in time, I ask you to look at your two or three biggest fears. Whatever those fears are, simply make a mental note of those fears. They'll come to you easily. These are things that you think about often and you feel fearful. Could be the future, could be a relationship, could be death, could be your own, somebody else's. Whatever your biggest points of fear are, simply make a mental note and that's it. And now take a deep breath in. And as you breathe in, take energy from Meenal. I am Meenal. As you release some of the fear that you've been holding, just with ease, ease and grace, simply knowing that as you exhale, some of the fear is already leaving you. Inhale, exhale. Deep breaths. And now, with the next breath, as you inhale, imagine money and meanal in front of you. On one end, money, on the other end, meanal. They are just sitting in front of you. And as you look at them, and the two of them are smiling at you. Observe yourself as you release so much fear, so much fear has gone out of your body. And now you've become this little beautiful tiny dot, maybe three years old, maybe four years old. And that's who you are in this moment. You are a little three-year-old child. And as you see yourself as this beautiful child and money is looking at you and Meenal is looking at you and both of them are calling you to them. They're calling you and they're trying to entice you. Money has a toy, Meenal has some sweets and both of them are calling you to them. And you look at both of them mischief, total mischief in your eyes and you go to one and then you quickly run and go to the other. You're trying to decide what's going to work for you better. What do you want more, the sweet or the toy? And whatever it is that you choose, you finally go and sit in the lap of one of them. At this point, money has got a ball in his hand. And in the ball, he tells you to put your fears, the same fears that you were thinking about just a little while ago. Those fears, you simply take the ball and you stuff your fears into that ball. It's a big ball. And now it holds all your fears. And as you are looking at this ball, it's in your hand. And now you throw it. There's one money at one end and Meenal at one end. And you are throwing the ball from one to the other. And as you throw the ball, you're feeling so much fun, so much joy. This game, you've thrown the ball. All your fears have gone. That's it. You've thrown the ball away and all your fears have gone. 
But wait, what's just happening? Meenal just threw the ball right back at you. She's throwing the ball back at you and you look at the fears. Oh, oh, they're all back here again. And so you look at that ball and now you know what to do. You simply throw it again and you are giggling. So much joy in finding this a game. It's just a game. And now each time money or Meenal throws you the ball and you throw it back to them. And then they throw you the ball and you throw it back at them. And in all of this, so much laughter. There is so much laughter, so much joy, so much lightheartedness. You are looking at that ball. It has your fears, but you are no longer fearful of that ball. That ball doesn't belong to you. It simply gets shunted from one place to another. And as you do that in a little bit, you, this little beautiful person, is tired. And now as you are tired, you simply choose one lap and you go there and lie down. And in a second, blissfully, you are fast asleep. See yourself, zero worries, zero fears. That ball doesn't belong to you. It's not even there. It's somewhere in this universe. And you, with so much contentment, now fast asleep. Only joy, only peace in you, in your sleep. And this is giving away your fears to money and to meaner. You just did that and it was so easy. And now each time you feel some fear, remember this game and put all your fears into a ball and throw to money. He might give you back the ball, but play it as a game. It's only a game. Omen. Okay, everyone. Okay. Somebody is writing to me. Let me see what do they want. Uh, hi, Meenal. Can I have the copy of the recording, please? Uh, this is being recorded on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and you will find um, you will find the recording over there. Your son distracted you in perfection. And so you'll find the recording over there. So you enjoy. Okay, everyone. Lots and lots of love. See you on Saturday. Bye-bye.